So what you should do if you are dealing with mean, disrespectful church members, give them a piece of your mind. Being a pastor's wife is often seen as a glamorous role, but behind the scenes, it can be one of the most challenging roles to navigate. Today, I am sharing the real struggles that comes with this calling. Whether you are a pastor's wife, a church member, or someone that's curious about what this role entails, my hope is to encourage those that carry this weight every day. After 30 years of serving in the role of being a pastor's wife, I have shed my share of difficulties, loneliness, criticism, and constant change. But I have learned valuable lessons along the way, and I want to share them with you. One of the challenges that wives in ministry face is experiencing superficial relationships in the church. Sometimes it feels like people are more interested in what you can do for them than building a genuine connection. I don't know why, but you have some church members that they feel like your job is to solve their problems and they don't understand that it's up to them to handle their own situations. It's okay for you to hold their hand or just to be there when they need someone to talk to, but it's not your responsibility to try to solve their problems. Same way with God. He doesn't solve our problems. He's there to help and to guide us, but it is up to us to put the work in. Out of the 30-something years of being in ministry, I may have had three close friends at my church and reasons why I don't recommend wives in ministry to have friends at their church is because most of the time, whenever that person gets ready to leave your church, for some reason, they don't want to be your friend anymore. And What's so bad about it is it make you wonder that this person ever really genuinely care for you because if they did, it really shouldn't matter just because you have left the church and went to another one. I mean, if I don't have any problems with it, I don't see why that person should. But for me, that's the way it have always been. So I have learned to build friendships outside of my church. You want people to want to be your friend because they genuinely like who you are, not because they want something from you or not because of the title that you have. I encourage you to find you a friend outside of your church, whether it's a mentor. And if you have a problem with finding people in your community, you can always go online and join different groups for wives in ministry because it can feel lonely and isolating when you are married to a pastor. Now, having a busy husband is one of the main challenges that I have faced. And it took me years to learn how to deal with it, even though it shouldn't. But the ministry sometimes take precedence over family life leaving you feeling like you are competing for your husband's attention. There have been many of times when my husband and, and I are going out on a date and his cell phone rings, he answers it, and a member is having an, an issue. So he has to talk to them, try to comfort them. And I have to sit there and just wait until the conversation is over with. There have been different times over the holidays, when we're getting ready to sit down to eat dinner and my husband's cell phone rings and he have to leave because it's an emergency. A member have gotten into a car accident, are sick in the hospital, and they need him to pray for them. Being married to a pastor, a lot of times you don't get to go on vacations. And it's because that your husband is so concerned about the church until he don't want to leave the church because he's afraid that something is going to happen. You don't get to have a lot of quality time 
with your spouse. Every so often when I receive an email from a single lady that feel that her calling is to be married to a pastor. And I always smile to myself because I'm like, you don't really understand or know what you are asking for. Being married to a pastor, it is glamorous and you do get a lot more attention, but it's a lot more sacrificing. When you leave the church, church goes home with you. So that's why I will tell any single lady or married couple and your husband is considering becoming a pastor, make sure that you pray about it and that you are called. Because if you are called, you will be able to handle it. It won't be as difficult for you. But if you're not called, you're going to feel miserable because your marriage is different from the average marriage. If you desire to spend more time with your husband, what you can do is have a conversation with him. Let him know about how the way that you feel. And when you talk to your husband about your feelings, how that you desire to spend more quality time with him, make sure that it is the right time and that you have the right tone of voice because that will make the difference. Be sincere. Every so often, you should schedule dates with your husband or even just go out of town for the weekend, which I know it may be a hard thing to convince him to do, but don't give up. Use your charm and win him over by showing him love and kindness. My husband pastors two churches. One of the churches he pastor, he is the founder of the church, and that's the one that we have been there for over 30 years. But recently, he has started pastoring a different church. And I want to talk about what to do when you encounter mean church members. Now, the church that my husband founded, the people there, they are very respectful to us. And we don't have any issues with it having mean church members are people just come up to you and saying anything and think it think that it's okay. But now this new church that my husband is at is at is totally different. They feel that they can just say whatever they want to to you, whether it hurt your feelings or not, and you just supposed to take it. So I'm not used to that. And I'm learning how to deal with mean church members and not to take it personal when they say things that's offensive or criticizing something that your husband did. So what you should do if you are dealing with mean, disrespectful church members, give them a piece of your mind. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> but ignore the ones that are negative. Don't take it personal and just focus on the members that are friendly and just keep it moving. Try not to take it personal. And know that you can't please everybody and that some people, no matter what your husband does, they're going to find something to complain about. So the main thing is just learn not to take it personal. Just ignore those and focus on the members that appreciate you. Trust can be fragile in ministry. And when it's broken, it can leave scars. Have you ever confided in someone at your church? And later, you hear it all around the church. So you feel frustrated, embarrassed. And it's normal that sometimes you're going to go through things in your life and you are going to need someone to talk to, someone that you can confide in. Because we are human. Instead of sharing anything personal about yourself with anyone, unless you are using it as a testimony and it's something that you don't mind them telling someone else. Other than that, you should find a mentor, someone that you can confide in and someone that's going to give you sound advice. If I could go back in time and change anything, when I became a pastor's wife, I would have sought out a mentor or some type of group for wives in ministry. And it is because that every so often you are going to go through things in your life, whether it's in your marriage, something that you are dealing with, 
personally. And you just need someone to hold your hand, someone to pray for you and encourage you. If you need a mentor, I am here for you. Feel free to email me or you can set up a one-on-one consultation. I will have my information in the description box below. I have been through a lot of things in my life and I'm a witness that God will bring you through and God can turn things around for your good. It is frustrating when people assume that your role is only to support your husband, that you don't have a life of your own. And I do want to explain that it's nothing wrong with assisting your husband because that is your job. God wants you to do that. He created you for that. But you still have to understand that God has something special for you to do that doesn't involve your husband. It took me years to find my special place in ministry. And for so long, I criticized myself because I was so different from the average pastor's wives that I had been around. I'm very introverted. I don't like being in the spotlight. And I know it's funny because I create these videos, but I genuinely don't like being in the spotlight. I'm not good at public speaking, preaching. So it took me a long time to find my special place, my special thing that God wants me to do. You're not your husband's shadow and God has something special for you to do. And sometimes it may take years for you to walk into your season. And it could be because there's some things that God want you to learn, certain things he want you to grow in. And that's why it's taking so long. So don't be in a rush because God's timing is always perfect. It took me years to find my special place. And from being so fearful of public speaking, once I started creating these videos, and that's when God started delivering me from having the fear of public speaking. I knew that this is my special place. I don't know how long God is going to help me doing this. I know that right now I'm in his will. So I want to encourage you to find your special place. Start doing things that you enjoy doing. That's that's just for you. Start reaching out and praying to God. And if you are clueless about your gifts that God has given you, start praying to him about it. Ask God to lead and guide you. And also keep a listening ear. Don't have so much going on in your life to where when God tries to talk to you, you don't recognize his voice because you're so distracted of doing everything else. Most importantly, move slow and allow God to lead and guide you. And he will show you your special place. Not long ago, I received an email from a pastor's wife sharing with me how that she felt hurt because recently the church that they have been at for over 10 years, they had to move and relocate to a different church. And how once they moved and relocated from their previous church, none of the members tried to reach out to them. It's like they just moved on and forgotten about them. And I felt so bad for her. It's, it's normal to get attached to people and it's okay to love people, but but don't get so attached to where if you have to leave that particular church or if that church member decides to move their membership to another church, don't take it personally. Just learn to enjoy them while they are with you. One of the main things that you can do if you guys have to relocate to a different location and it may be far away is Make your home a haven. Make your home a place of peace and refuge. That way, no matter where you move to, it's going to feel like home for you. God put something special in women. And we are gifted at creating a peaceful environment at home. In order to create a haven at home, the peace have to be inside of you. If the peace of God is inside of you, no matter where you move, it's going to be with you. 
and it will feel like you are at home. If you're feeling unseen, undervalued, or overwhelmed, know that he has equipped you for this calling. Lean on him and don't hesitate to seek support. Let's keep this conversation going. I love talking to you guys. What challenges have you faced as a pastor's wife? How have you overcome them? If this video was a help to you, please like, share with a friend that you think that needs some encouragement that will be beneficial to. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe. Make sure you watch the video about 10 mistakes young pastor's wives make. May God bless you. Bye.